Welcome to Season 2 of the To Health With That podcast, where we break up big health topics into small bites. I'm Amy, and this season I'll share all the tips, tricks, and hacks you need to get healthy with an MTHFR mutation in a step-by-step, week-by-week process. I can't wait. This week, let's talk about the dangers of UMFA, or unmetabolized folic acid, in pregnancy. So UMFA, or unmetabolized folic acid, is something that's been popping up on research radars more and more frequently in recent years. The combination of food fortified with folic acid, multivitamin use, the popularity of B-complex supplements for energy, and the standard practice of hyperdosing women with any kind of an at-risk pregnancy has led to UNFA becoming actually kind of a common problem. Last week, we discussed the remarkable results that methylfolate produced in couples with infertility relative to the current standard of care, which is high-dose folic acid. This week, I'd like to expand on that a little bit by talking about the risks of too much unmetabolized folic acid, or UMFA, during pregnancy. First, let's talk usable folate. So one very wisely designed study published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition compared serum and red blood cell levels of total folate, 5-LMTHF, UMFA, and MEFOX, which is a methylfolate oxidation product, kind of like the 5-LMTHF version of UMFA, The reason I call this study design wise is that it gives us a good window into what's actually happening here. So serum levels test the amounts of whatever we're testing in the fluid part of the blood, which is not yet inside the cells. So it's been absorbed digestively, but it's not gotten where it needs to go yet. This isn't really a functional space for folate. It it has been absorbed, right? But it hasn't reached useful cellular tissues. Red blood cell levels, however, measure the amount that's actually inside of cell spaces, and therefore doing something useful. The study didn't differentiate between MTHFR or non-MTHFR or any different types of folate intake. It simply compares two different doses of folic acid. One group received about 1.1 milligrams of folic acid in their prenatal vitamins. The other group received the prenatal vitamin amount plus an additional 4 milligrams to bring them to a grand total of 5.1 milligrams or 5,100 micrograms of folic acid. So there's a low-dose group and a high-dose group. What they found was that the RBC folate level, which is the functional level, didn't actually differ significantly between the two groups. So the high-dose folate group did have higher serum levels of total folate, UMFA, and even 5-LMTHF. Other parameters didn't differ significantly. So because of this, if the actual active cellular level is staying reasonably the same between the two doses, and only the extracellular levels are changing, including this unwanted metabolic byproduct, UMFA, then that gives us really good information. So the researchers came to the conclusion that there was some kind of tissue saturation happening where more folate just can't get into the cells, which makes sense. They also suggest that higher UMFA concentrations in the women women receiving the high-dose folic acid indicates that those doses are, quote-unquote, super physiologic. That's a fancy way of saying the dose is just too high. So what is all of this UMFA doing to a pregnancy? Well, another study, also published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, studied UMFA levels in cord blood relative to autism spectrum disorder. So cord blood is the blood that remains in the placenta and the attached umbilical cord after delivery. This study found that babies in the highest quartile of UMFA percentages in the cord blood had the highest risk for autism spectrum disorder. This effect was most pronounced in black babies and significantly correlates with race. The correlation did not apply to the concentrations of 5-methyl tetrahydrofolate or to serum total folate. So even with a very high serum total folate, if the UMFA remained low, then they did not see that tendency towards autism spectrum disorder. Yet another study published in the Journal of Allergy and Clinical Immunology in Practice looked at the association between UMFA levels and food sensitivity or food allergy. This study tested total folate, 5-MTHF, and UMFA levels at birth and again in early childhood. 
The research found that of the 1,394 children tested, 507 were found to have food sensitivities and 78 had food allergies. In those children who developed food allergies, the average total folate concentrations at birth were lower and the umpha levels at birth were higher. Higher umpha levels later on in childhood didn't actually seem to be associated in any way. So I will quote from the conclusion of this study. Higher concentrations of umpha at birth were associated with the development of food allergies, which may be due to increased exposure to synthetic folic acid in utero. So what do we really make of this? These are small studies, and we really can't, as much as we might like to, draw sweeping conclusions from them. But it certainly gives us some compelling evidence that too much of what is supposed to be a good thing can rapidly become a bad thing. Because we, with MTHFR polymorphisms, are more susceptible to problems associated with folic acid, I think it's important to have an informed and complete conversation with your healthcare practitioners about the risks of folic acid supplementation in pregnancy, for us specifically, and also the viable, albeit less well-researched option of supplementing with 5-L-methyl tetrahydrofolate instead. Links to the research studies that I've talked about in this podcast are actually in full in the article. So if you're planning a visit with your prenatal health practitioner, your ob or your midwife, go armed with copies of the research to show them. Thank you so much for listening today, and please make sure you've signed up for the email list. The email list and the people on it will be the first to know about new courses, programs, and freebies for MTHFR folks. See you there.